grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. In the waters of baptism, Abba Clement died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May now share with him eternal glory.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord.
first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples of Jesus were going to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, It is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus gave the impression that he was going on farther, but they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, 
broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them, who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Most reverend bishops, reverend clergy, dear confreres, my brothers and sisters in Christ. They had had enough. Those disciples had had enough. All of their hopes had been dashed. They were leaving. Jesus, their Messiah, had been crucified. And now, the tale that he had been raised, that the tomb was empty. It was just too much for them. How many times do we, in our lives, feel the same way? That life is too much for us. That the situations that happen in our lives are just so unexplainable, so difficult, so problematic, that we just think about quitting. The disciples are on their way, away from the action. And Jesus walks with them. But they don't recognize it. Why? They don't recognize the Lord with them because of the fact that they are too introspective into themselves. They're too hung up on their own sorrow. They're too hung up on their own confusion. And they don't recognize Jesus. How many of us when we were searching for a spiritual director, came upon Clemens Zelesnik. Most of us probably started when he was Father Clement. He was my novice master, and the novice master for probably half the community. He had tons of experience. He knew what it meant to get up and quit. And he told us in the novitiate class that sometimes things are going to be tough in community life. Sometimes we're not going to agree with our confreres. We're not going to agree with what the abbot says. He says, don't give up. He says, a lot of people say, Bye-bye, Jesus. That was his phrase. Bye-bye, Jesus. But how many of us were about to give up? Confused, distraught in our faith. And Abbot Clement walked with us. Abbot Clement walked with us. And what was the first question he asked you in spiritual direction? 
So where are you going? The same question that Jesus asks these two disciples. He listens. And that's an important aspect of any spiritual director. The ability to listen. And it's the first word of the rule. Listen, my son, to the words of the Master. Incline to them with the ear of your heart. And Abbot Clement did the same. In listening to the heart of the people that he was dealing with. Listening to the monks that he was dealing with. Listening to the students that he was teaching. And after he was listening, what does Jesus say to those two disciples? He doesn't say, oh, poor you. He says, how slow of heart are you that you didn't know and didn't recognize that the Messiah had to suffer? And he went through all the scriptures and he describes all the passages that apply to him. Abbot Clement never said in spiritual direction, poor you. He said to us the same way, so what are you doing about it? What's going on? Don't you know that the Lord loves you? Why don't you feel that the Lord loves you? What's going on? When are you going to let go of that? When are you going to get, look, let go of this? When are you going to move forward? When are you going to allow Jesus to run your life? Abbot Clement did not mince words when it came to the spiritual life. But he listened and he challenged. And Jesus challenges us. Jesus challenges us. He challenges us to put more and more into his hands. He challenges us to let go more and more of the things in this world that the world says are going to make us who we are. And Abba Clement knew that this world cannot make us who we are. Only a relationship with Christ, only placing ourselves in the Father's care, only listening attentively to the Holy Spirit is going to allow us to reach our fullest potential. Those disciples later on say, were not our hearts burning within us as we listened to him on the road? And he, as, he, as he broke open the scriptures to us. Abbot Clement shared with us his many insights from this very pulpit every Monday when he was abbot. Right during Vespers, he gave a spiritual conference I could listen to him all day. He shared his thoughts. He shared his insights in the monastic life and the spiritual life. When you came to him for spiritual direction, he shared himself with you. His spiritual journey. He journeyed with you. And how important that is. My brothers and sisters, we are those disciples who many times feel we've had enough. God is asking too much of me. Abbot Clement would just laugh if you said that. Ha! <laughs> Throw his head back. God is only asking from you what you can give. Why are you refusing to give it?
would be his next statement. Emmett Clement had a razor sharp intellect. Razor sharp. I've never met anybody that has read as much as him. Voracious reader. As a novice, I was bowled over by his intellect, by his academics as a physics teacher. But I also learned quite clearly his practical side. He knew what it meant to use sandpaper, to wood carve. He knew what it was to garden. He knew what it was to do the practical things of life. I remember as a novice on our hands and knees varnishing the floor here in the choir stalls. I remember helping him take buckets and buckets of soil up to the top of the fourth floor there where he had a garden plot. Why up there? Because the sun is better up there, he said. <laughs> It'll get more sun up there than here and there and everywhere. He was, a sci he was always a scientist. He loved to deal with the aspects of science. He loved to talk about the Hubble telescope and what it showed. He loved all that stuff. And it didn't take him away from his faith. It brought him closer into his faith. It's the important thing we need to always remember. Abbot Clement's undoubted hero was St. John Paul II. He has in his room now at least eight volumes of autobiography and works of John Paul II. He was always recommending these works. He has a picture of him on his wall. And he spoke of the importance of the movement to be totally free. In St. John Paul II's work on the consecrated life, Vita Consecrata, he speaks of the value of spiritual freedom that is necessary if one is to accept the spiritual life. What does that mean? A few years ago, in one of my spiritual direction sessions, he said, Michael, he says, I am more free now than I've ever been. Of course, I'm sitting there in front of him going, what does that mean? And how many of us have the same experience? He basically said that to be free in the Lord is to understand Total surrender. Total surrender to God. And why are we afraid to surrender totally to God? Because we'll lose a little control. What little control we have over our lives. And Clement challenged me, and I'm sure he challenged everybody, with the idea of losing control and placing everything in surrender to the hands of God. As St. John Paul II's life was united with Christ, so too Clement's life was united with Christ. He did not allow anything to come between him and a movement deeper into the spiritual life. He knew the wholeness of the human person. And as he taught every novice that he ever spoke with, the importance of integrating into life the physical, the spiritual, and the mental aspects of life. And he lived it. How important it is for us to understand and to, and to continuously challenge ourselves 
in the spiritual life. Jesus did that to those disciples on that road. And it was that challenge that went deep into themselves, deep into their hearts, changed them, molded them, and transformed them. And Clement knew what this was about. Whether he was at Loyola Retreat House, whether he was here teaching novices in formation, in the school teaching physics and theology, in the parish, organizing a group to Haiti for the relief of the poor. Whatever it was, he did it with gusto. Sometimes you felt he was pushing you like right out. But he did it with gusto and he did let nothing come in between him and the fulfillment of what he discerned was God's will. Jesus breaks the bread and the disciples recognize who he is. Now think about it. These disciples were already in the inn. It's about 4.30 in the afternoon and they asked Jesus to stay with them. They were finished for the day. They were ready to bed down. But when Jesus breaks that bread, when they recognize who Jesus is, what do they do? They don't care about living in that inn anymore. They don't care about their rooms there. They take off and they run to Jerusalem. Right then and there. And they hear about the risen Christ from the apostles, from the other disciples in Jerusalem. No longer are they running away. They are running towards. Towards the life of sacrifice. Towards being a disciple of Christ. Towards giving witness to the resurrection. That's what happens when you surrender yourself totally to Christ. Clement knew what it was to serve God. He loved to work with people on the journey. He loved to accompany people on the journey. He saw Christ in others, and we saw Christ in him. Even in the midst of weaknesses, difficulties, challenges to his health, he never let himself rest that well. He always was willing to see somebody, always was willing to talk with somebody, always, always was willing to share another spiritual insight with you, whether it was personally, on the phone, by letter, whatever. My brothers and sisters, I chose this reading from the gospel because it hit me so hard how like Abbot Clement's life, this story was. And how it has influenced me, and how it has influenced many, many of you. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord for Clement's life. We thank the Lord for his yes to God, for his yes to the monastic life. We thank the Lord for the example of his parents, the example of the household that led him to understand who God was in his life and that he needed to have a relationship with that God. And we thank the Lord for all the many experiences he had in this monastery. We thank the Lord for the spiritual insights that he received and the experiences that he had. 
We thank the Lord for his traveling with us on the road when we mostly needed it. He was there. And Abbot Clement is letting us remember those insights. Just like Christ was reminding those disciples of the sacred scriptures and the treasures that they had. What they spoke, the truth of his existence and who he was. My brothers and sisters, let us continue in the example of what we have learned from the Lord through Abbot Clement and his various ministries. And let us, in our lives, when we are challenged, especially remember his example for, for us, so that we, like those disciples, may take courage, may place our lives in the hands of God and trust more in the power of the Holy Spirit so that we too may run, run back, run to give witness, run to understand the Lord in the Eucharist, the breaking of the bread, and all the ways the Lord manifests himself to us. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful depart, that the mercy of God rest in peace. Please respond, hear our prayer. In baptism, Abbey Clement received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death to the glory of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Our brother, Abbot Clement, was nourished at the table of the Savior and shared in the sacramental priesthood of Christ. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Abbot Clement shared in the paternal responsibilities of being an abbot and, <clears throat> and, loving and, and loved sharing his talents and spiritual guidance with this monastic community. May St. Benedict now lead him into the heavenly realms. Lord, in your mercy. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Those whose lives have been touched by Abbot Clement seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother, Abbot Clement. Strengthen our hopes so that we may continuously live in the expectation of your Son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, give her peace and hear her soul. Hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives are purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Christ our Lord. Amen. Him the hope of blessed resurrection has gone. That those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is change, not end. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, the eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts, powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Seven away when supper was in, he took the chalice. And once again, giving thanks, he said the blessing, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Bishop Pulaski, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have named for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. Your compassionate, and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And remember your servant, Abbot Clement Leo Zelesnik, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. For when, when, we will, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you through all the ages, Praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
God called him to do. And one other thing that I just want to mention too is that many of you don't know this, but Father Clement was a heck of a golfer. You know, if you know, I don't know, I never thought he was a golfer because he was always in the chapel, you know? I never thought he was a golfer. One time, one time we went out golfing and that, that, that little figure of his, he would hit a ball a mile. He had, he had the technique, he had all this, he had all the qualities that it really took to be good. And he was good at everything he put his mind to because he knew that everything he had, Jesus gave him to use to the best of his ability. And so today as we, as we share this time with, with him, as, he, as we say goodbye and as we commend his soul to the Lord, isn't it wonderful to do it during Easter time? Isn't it wonderful to do it at Easter time, you know? And just as we see all those stories that we read in the, in the, in the readings of the, in the Mass during this Easter time of, of the experiences the apostles have and seeing the resurrected Christ and Christ interacting with them and Christ encouraging them and Christ promising them that He would be with them always. And we know, we truly know too, that Clement will be with us always as well. Because the things that he has done, the influence he has been on our lives, and what he has, the impact he's made on each and every one of us who are here today, it won't die. It won't die. And we can continue. We can continue having a relationship with Clement. And let's never forget him in our prayers. Let's never forget him in our masses. And let us never forget that all we need to do when we need an inspiration, when we need some help, to say, Clement, I need your help. I need your help. And believe me, he's never without an answer. And so, God bless you all for being here today. And I thank you, Father Abbott, for letting me, giving me an opportunity to say a few words. And uh, he told me to keep it short, so that's it. <laughs> So it's very true. 
hero he was to gain people to realize their strengths and their limitations <laughs> so that we could be able to grow from them. And I started working on and sing at and that's okay. But with that being said, I lined up with the swan thought. As we enter in the television hallway where the, the, the novices sleep, there's a, oh, a, a dorm praying there in some space, and he had a piece of wood there with the same. And I took the piece of wood, I made a copy of it, and this is what it said, and you know, it really struck me. Because I believe I have a plan to live these words. This is my whole life to say yes to the Father. Not escaping from the circumstances in which you have placed me, but saying it within the setting of my life. Embracing more ardently the ideal of religious life which has consecrated me to you, Christ. And that, to me, is his life. He lived it. He lived it. And so we celebrate Adam Clement's resurrection with Christ into heaven because he truly allowed the Spirit of God to move through him First of all, to accept him, move through him, and to others. So Adam Clem is truly seen in heaven, and he'll probably give me with some singing qualities later on in life. And as I say, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Trusting in God, we pray together for Abbot Clement, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Clement again and enjoy his friendship. Although this we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.
and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. And merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother Evan Clement forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now take our brother to his place of rest. Mm -hmm. 